The barricade device is designed to close large defects in the annulus, thereby reducing recurrent herniation, early hospital readmissions, and associated reoperations in patients at high risk. This overview will discuss today's unmet clinical need, as well as safety and efficacy of the barricade device. All claims are supported by published peer-reviewed data. Discectomy surgery is the most commonly performed spine procedure, with approximately 1 million patients operated upon each year worldwide. Initial results are most often good. Surgery provides immediate pain relief through decompression of the affected nerve. However, large population-based studies have consistently demonstrated low patient satisfaction and relatively high reoperation rates over time. In order to better understand the value barricade can have for a patient's outcome, let's first zoom in on the unmet clinical need. It is important to note that the barricade device is not indicated for all discectomy patients. A surgeon will typically find around 10% of their lumbar discectomy patients return at some point with a recurrent herniation. But not all patients are at the same risk for reherniation. What if you could predict which patients are at the greatest risk? A recent meta-analysis published in Spine showed that large defects in the annulus lead to a substantially higher rate of recurrence and associated reoperation. This systematic review confirmed that at least 30% of lumbar discectomy patients have these large defects following discectomy. When focusing on this subpopulation, the recurrence rate is shockingly high. 25% or 1 in 4 patients has recurrent symptoms within the first 2 years. Again, these rates are found when looking just at the large defect patient population. Patients with small annular defects tend to do extremely well and are at low risk of reherniation. The barricade implant was designed to securely close large defects in the annulus in order to reduce the risk of recurrent herniation in this high-risk subpopulation. A flexible polyester fabric is designed to close the hole and is kept in place by a titanium bone anchor fixed to the adjacent vertebral body. The implant can be placed in either the inferior or superior vertebral body, depending on location of the defect. No artifact is present on MRI. The next section of this presentation will discuss results with the barricade device when compared to today's standard of care, that of discectomy alone. It has taken 18 years to move through the steps required to deliver level one evidence. With more than 7,500 patients treated with Barricade, its safety and efficacy profile is well established. We will now zoom in on what is considered one of the most comprehensive and largest randomized superiority studies ever conducted in spine. 21 centers enrolled 554 patients in a randomized controlled trial. Patients were randomized one-to-one -one intraoperatively following completion of a limited discectomy and were included in the study only if a large defect was measured. The study design was developed in collaboration with the US FDA and included two co-primary endpoints at two years, prevention of reherniation and an eight-point safety and effectiveness composite endpoint. Barricade was found to be superior to discectomy alone on both endpoints by a significant margin. The study results were published in the Spine Journal in May 2018. Trial success in this high-risk population was driven by a 50% reduction in the rate of symptomatic recurrence in the barricade group. This statistically significant reduction was achieved within the first three months and was sustained through three years and beyond. The same benefit is observed when looking at reoperative recurrences with a 60% reduction in favor of barricade. Discectomy is one of the most successful procedures in spine with excellent results reported. While repeat discectomy is not always seen as a major life-changing event, the RCT data confirms findings that were published earlier by other large studies, including the SPORT trial and the Swedish Spine Registry. Patients who undergo secondary surgeries have significantly worse outcomes. Roughly four times more patients suffer from disability 
and nearly two times more patients are not working in the reoperated group when compared to patients who did not need a reoperation. These results are devastating, both from a patient and societal perspective. Avoiding reoperations in this high risk population is critical for the advancement of spine surgery. In closing, let's take a look at the health economic aspects when introducing the barricade implant for this subgroup of high risk patients. Level 1 outcome data has now confirmed that treating high risk patients with barricade leads to significant reductions in reherniations, reoperations, and hospital readmissions. An approximate 50% reduction in all three is first observed within the first three months and was sustained through three years and beyond. A cost-effectiveness study in spine has demonstrated that barricade is highly cost-effective when compared to discectomy alone. If looked at from a societal perspective, cost savings and quality of life both continue to improve over time. In summary, one in three discectomy patients will have a large defect in their annulus. In this patient group, one in four will have a symptomatic recurrent herniation within two years. Use of barricade cuts reherniations and reoperations in half. The rate of device associated serious adverse events was 3.3%, with no compromise to future revision options. Barricade is highly cost effective in this high risk patient group when compared to discectomy alone.